call. Just looking at the incident defense services in the United States. This is updated in 2012. Right. <laughs> now, um... I had read that there's approximately 1,015 uh, indigent services in the United States. Yeah. The Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution states that all persons accused of a crime have the right to counsel in their defense. Mm -hmm. Explicitly, the Sixth Amendment states that in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial. Mm -hmm by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. Yes, of course it was committed in Jefferson County in Brennan, Washington. Even though I emailed the police department that I was actually in Port Angeles that day. Yeah. Uh, which district shall be, shall have been previously ascertained by law. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the prosecuting attorney's office realizes that when you file a criminal complaint, two count criminal complaint in court, mm -hmm. uh, you should be sure about the actual whereabouts of the accused. Yeah. And to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation. Now, this is something I looked at. Mm -hmm. What did cause the two count criminal complaint uh, since I was in Port Angeles, Washington on June 16th of 2017? <laughs> And what did cause the cyber stalking complaint when I'd emailed approximately a million emails before that date? I'd been previously arrested and had emailed law enforcement in 2015, 2016, and, well, the first half of 2017 about the issuance of the fraudulent protection order. Yeah. And then the arrest and the incarceration where I was in Innsbruck, Washington on December 31st of 2015. Mm -hmm. What was the actual cause of the two count criminal complaint? It wasn't that law enforcement was wanting to cover up their crime so that they would not be held liable for what they had sworn. <laughs> Just get me those swearing ins of each and every person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all the individuals that were there to congratulate you when you got your job in law enforcement. Poop. And then to be confronted with the witnesses against him. Yeah. I've never had that before. I didn't have that in 2016. Yeah. I didn't have the availability of confronting the witnesses in 2017. Poop. I haven't had the right to confront any witnesses against myself in 2018. Yes. But I've had a lot of court hearings that said that I was uh, delusional. Mm -hmm. Bipolar, coach, schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And then to have a compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in my favor. Yes. Never had that. Ooh. Now, um, I could have... Uh, well, I could have called the Serenity House, yes, the individual that was there that evening where I'd signed in on December 30th of 2015, yeah. Did you see me or did you sign a statement that I was actually sleeping in the homeless shelter that night? Yes. I could have called the bus driver that was driving the bus from the Serenity House to the downtown that morning on December 31st of 2015 at 7.05 a.m. Oh, oh, oh. I could have called the second bus driver. Yes. Do you remember seeing me on the bus that morning? Yes. Mm -hmm. Video surveillance camera footage. You know, I probably could have asked a librarian. Did you see me in the librarian on December 31st of 2015 sending emails where the King County Administrator had obstructed them all? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on June 16th of 2017, I was in the senior center. Yeah. Sending emails. I could have asked another senior citizen, do you remember signing the law book as a senior citizen on June 16th of 2017? Yeah. Well, I had signed it and you had signed it. Do you remember if you were in there at the same time I was in there? Yes, yes, yes. This would be an, a compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in my favor. Oh. And to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Yes. Now, Jack never asked me where I was at on June 16th of 2017. 
Didn't ask me what I was doing that day. No. Said I was having a 1077 because he was sure I was crazy. Pow, pow, pow. Bruce Hanafy, I did meet with him after I'd been um, arraigned. Yes. On January 5th, I was arrested. Uh, let me see here. That was a Monday. I think I was actually arraigned that day or the next day. Maybe we could call Judge Porter as a magistrate and get the video of that actual arraignment. I was allowed to leave the court under my own recognizance. Yeah. Never was I allowed to actually uh, call the petitioner to the stand. Yeah. Now, I would think as this compulsory process for obtaining a witness in my favor. Yeah. Did you see me? I mean, did you actually speak to me? Did I did I touch you in any well, victimizing way in Squim, Washington on December 31st of 2015? <laughs> or did I... It seems that the Sixth Amendment doesn't apply to me. Yeah. Now, over the legal history of the United States Supreme Court's rule, the Sixth Amendment requires um, the levels of government to provide counsel to persons accused of crime who cannot afford to hire a lawyer. <laughs> now, of course, it's not entirely a public defense or a public expense. Yes. Why don't you get me all those public defenders that would say, well, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, Alabama state government indigent defense expenditures. Seems like we spend a lot of money on this. <laughs> Office of the Indigent, in, Indigent Defense Services, yeah, established in 1975. Now, this comparing Census Bureau external sources, mm -hmm. how many of those uh, employed in the government that receive their compensation? Oh, this is in Arizona. Yeah, a public defender's agency. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get me every employee and every paralegal? In all the indigent defense services where federal or state funds are paid, yes, to provide any sort of, well, indigent services. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I'll sue all of them poop for any knowledge of me not having the Sixth Amendment right to have, well, counsel my defense, yes, not have the right to compel uh, witnesses in my favor, right. <laughs> the just give me every employee of all the indigent services of the United States and many of them have not oh look at California spends quite a bit of money on this or maybe it's the size of the state it could be one or the other yeah District of Columbia <laughs> federal employee federally funded and funds are held in US Treasury <laughs> is that right yeah now, the public defender services established in the District of Columbia, yeah, independent legal organization that is governed by an 11-member board of trustees, yeah. Why don't you get me all the members of the board of trustees of the public defender services, yeah. Federal programs serves federally funded and funds are held in U.S. Treasury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have those funds. Mm. Could you... Oh. My gosh, is comprised of seven trial division, appellate division, special litigation division, parole division, mental health division, civil legal services division, community defender division. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that um, any of these funds that are held in the U.S. Treasury, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are the employees of the U.S. Treasury? Yeah. I'd like to have a complete accounting of all the actual taxpayer funds that have been used to support these. Well, listen, Georgia, okay. Give me every oath, badge, attorney, law enforcement officer that has had a swearing-in ceremony where they invited their friends and their relatives to hear that they got a new job. Okay, Georgia. <laughs> and all of those that were elected to office in the state of Georgia for the last 40 years where when they did win the campaign, yes, they invited their family and friends, yes. And then in the state of Georgia, all of those appointed to office where they thought it was real special, the swearing in and the scribes and scribes. <laughs> Give me their family and friends, pooch. Because when I really think about it, there are times of celebration for every attorney that has passed the bar where they thought, oh my gosh, I'm an attorney now. Let me invite my family and friends <laughs> to the swearing in of the attorney oath where you raise your right hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you swear that you will support the laws of your individual states? Mm -hmm. 
You will support the Constitution of your individual state. <laughs> you will support the United States Constitution, and you will do what the attorney oath says. And that's why you have a big friend and family get together. Yeah. You go out to dinner, you take pictures. <laughs> you put it in the newspaper, governor of the state of Georgia. Yes, yes, yes. You know, being a parole officer or probation officer is really not that special when you think about your friends and family being invited to it. But my thought is the state of Georgia mm -hmm. and all their friends and family of every government employee I will put them on the witness stand. I will ask them, were you there at the day of the swearing in? And I'll say, did you hear what he said? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what she said? Now, uh, I have the right to call witnesses in my lawsuit, Georgia. 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 Now, if you think that I'm playing some sort of game, I'm not. When it's a jury trial, summary judgments right now, Georgia. Are you sure? You don't want to go to court? <laughs> 